Hello everyone. Welcome to the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. I'm Dawn Leo, Executive Secretary for the Housing Choice Voucher Department. And I'm Vincent Stewart Sr., Supervisor for the Housing Quality Inspections Department. Today we'll be presenting to you a landlord briefing. So let's get into some important information for our landlords. The Section 8 program, now called the Housing Choice Voucher, or HCV program, is the federal government's major program for providing rental assistance to low-income families, including the elderly and disabled, and is administered by the local public housing authority. Eligible families are provided vouchers, which allows them to choose units in the private market, including apartments, single-family homes, or townhouses. Families must meet income requirements and other HUD PHA program eligibility processing requirements, including but not limited to criminal background screenings for all family members 18 years old and older. The PHA does not screen for suitability. It is the owner agent's responsibility to screen prospective tenants for suitability. Our occupancy standards, meaning the size of the voucher based on the family composition for SNARA, are one to two persons, they receive a one-bedroom voucher. Two to four persons receive a two-bedroom voucher. Three to six persons receive a three-bedroom voucher, and so on. Seven or more would be a two-person per bedroom voucher. Payment standards are the maximum amount of subsidy that can be paid on behalf of eligible HCV participants based on the voucher size issued. Now note, these are amounts are reviewed annually after HUD posts local fair market rents or FMRs. And these payment standards are effective March 1st, 2020. The participant is eligible to move if they've fulfilled a 12-month lease and have given written notice to the owner agent on SNARA's vacate notice form, or they have fulfilled a 12-month lease and the owner agent has given the participant a no-cause termination notice, or they are in their first year of the lease and the participant has been approved for a reasonable accommodation to move and the owner agent has agreed to a mutual rescission. The participant will need to contact their caseworker to be issued the necessary documents to move. Tenants receive a voucher, a request for tenancy approval packet, or a RIFTA packet, along with the how to determine rent form. Regarding the leasing process, a family is issued a housing choice voucher and is responsible for finding a suitable housing unit of their choice, as long as the owner agrees to rent under the program and the rental unit must pass housing quality standards, HQS inspection, a minimum standards of safe, decent, and sanitary housing as determined by HUD regulations, and units must pass rent reasonableness. The lease is between the owner agent and the tenant. SNARA is not a party to that lease. Owners, agents, collection of rent, disputes, and other issues must be handled between the owner and the tenant. HCV doesn't get involved in tenant-owner disputes. Regarding the RIFTA process, our participants have 120 days from the date the voucher is issued to locate a unit and return the request for tenancy approval or RIFTA packet. It is very important for the participants to submit their RIFTA packet prior to the expiration date. Some of the documents that the owner agents provide are the W-9 or W-8 ECI, which are always required for the owner of the property. The W-9 is required from the management authorized agent only if they will receive the housing assistance payment on behalf of the owner. And we call that the HAP. Here's an example of a W-9 form or the request for taxpayer ID. The W-8 ECI form 
is also used for foreign owners without a tax ID. An authorization agreement for automatic deposits or an ACH form is also required by the owners. A copy of avoided check. SNARA also requires the owner to provide a copy of the recorded deed. SNARA has a form statement of property ownership that we also require the owners submit. If there is an authorized agency, management, realtor, power of attorney, friend, or a family member who is appointed to oversee the property on behalf of the owner, we will need a management agreement, letter of authorization from the owner, or a power of attorney type documents. Utilities must be on when the inspector comes out to inspect the unit. The lease must have the owner's name and the head of household tenant's name, the amount of monthly rent to the owners, the utilities and appliances to be supplied by the owner, and those to be supplied by the family. Once the family has leased the unit, the owner agent cannot make any changes to the contract. Security deposit is paid by the participant and cannot be more than the monthly rent. The housing assistance payment, or HAP, contract is between the housing authority and the owner. HAP is the monthly amount of subsidy payable by the housing authority to the owner. The tenant is not responsible for the HAP portion of rent, but must make their portion of rental payment each month. How is rent determined? Well, the owner determines what he or she charges for rent for the unit. Our office completes comparables for similar units in the same area, and this determines if the rent is reasonable. If the rent is deemed unreasonable, or if the rent exceeds 40% of the participant's adjusted income, our staff will contact the owner agent and attempt to negotiate the rent. The decision is up to the owner agent to reduce the rent and security deposit if necessary. And we must receive confirmation in writing of the reduction of rent acknowledgement when the rent is negotiated to a lower amount. SNARA does require a one-year lease, 12 months under the initial contract. Participants cannot move from one unit to another without the housing authority's prior approval, another inspection, and another HAP contract being executed, even within the same complex. Cancellation of the HAP contract from the Housing Choice Voucher can automatically occur for violation of any of the family obligations, which includes failure to submit required documents for their unit prior to the voucher expiring, failure to recertify annually, failure to allow our annual housing quality standards inspections, fraud, utilities being turned off, non-payment of a repayment agreement, Failure to abide by the terms of a judgment, lease violations for cause, including evictions. Avoid overpayments. So owners do need to notify SNARA when participants move out of the unit, they become deceased, or there's unauthorized people living in the unit. If the owner agent receives an overpayment, they will receive only one notice to return the funds. And if funds are not returned, they'll be recaptured from future payments in compliance with our Code of Federal Regulations and the HAP contract. If the owner agent does not have any other clients and does not return the funds, they will be sent to collection. Case may also be sent to the Office of Inspector General, but we just want to ensure that overpayments are returned immediately. Let's talk about side payments. Requiring extra side payments in excess of the family's share of rent is considered program fraud. The owner may not accept any other monies from the participant in the event SNARA determines the family has made side payments to the owner. The family and the owner will be terminated from the housing choice voucher program and its participation. If the owner does require additional rent, the request must be submitted to SNARA in writing. The owner may not request any rent adjustment during the initial one-year lease, but they can submit it on one of our forms, request for rent adjustment, at least 60 days prior to the effective date of the annual recertification. 
VAWA, the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act of 2013. It also happens to be a HUD regulation with another Code of Federal Regulation. Under a publication, it reads, and who reasonably believed he or she was imminently threatened by harm from further violence if he or she remained in the assisted dwelling unit. How does it affect the owners? Well, the federal law will take precedence over your lease, and the client will be issued a voucher to move. In compensation, SNARA will compensate the owner by paying an additional 30 days HAP. Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority's mission is to provide safe, decent, and sanitary housing conditions for low and very low income families and to manage resources efficiently. After the rent is determined to be reasonable, an initial inspection will be conducted using HUD's housing quality standards. Initial inspections are conducted within 10 business days. Utilities must be on in the unit. The unit must be move-in ready. The owner agent is, is encouraged to be at the unit during the initial inspection to sign the HAP contract. Or an adult, 18 years or older, must be present at the unit to allow the inspector access to the unit. Upon a past inspection, tenants may receive a key and move in. In the event the unit does not pass HQS inspection, the owner agent has 10 business days to correct the item. Upon completion of the repair, the owner agent must call Southern Nevada Regional Housing's HQS department to initiate a re-inspection appointment using the number 702-477-3453. The reinspections are conducted as soon as possible. Approximately 60 days prior to the anniversary date of the initial inspection, Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority HQS inspectors will come out for the annual inspection. Once again, an adult 18 years of age or older must be at the unit to allow Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority's inspectors to access the unit. Once the annual inspection passes, the owner agent receives a pass notice in the mail and the family receives a pass notice at the annual inspection. Deficiencies. If the unit fails inspection for non-compliance, a default notice is completed and mailed to the owner agent allowing them 15 calendar days to comply. Deficiencies. A reinspection date is written on the default notice notifying the date of return and time. Deficiencies. An extension can be granted if the owner agent requests an extension in writing and is received seven days after the first inspection. Examples of some inspections also known as deficiencies. A leaky faucet, electrical issues, or garbage disposal inoperable, heating, cooling, unit not at full capacity, or torn or cracked flooring, broken window. A special inspection is initiated by the tenant. An urgent matter may require a special inspection where this issue takes place before an annual inspection comes to date. A 24-hour life-threatening inspection. If an owner fails to correct a 24-hour life threatening condition as required by Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, the housing assistance payment known as the HAP will be abated and the HAP contract will be scheduled for cancellation. A 24-hour life-threatening inspection. If a family fails to correct a caused 24-hour life-threatening condition as required by Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority shall terminate the family's assistance. Housing quality inspections. HUD mandated samplings of 20% of inspections are conducted on all types of inspection. After a failed reinspection, an abatement is initiated. An abatement is when Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority funds to the owner are placed on hold for noncompliance. For example, an annual inspection done July 10th and it fails the reinspection date which is on July 25th, 15 days later. If the reinspection fails, the abatement date starts August the 1st, that it's its effective date 
Funds are placed on hold the effective date, which is the first of the following month. In this case, it would be August the 1st. However, if repairs are made and the owner agent is in, the is in compliance before the first of the following month, which is August 1st in this previous example, the abatement is canceled and there is no interruption in the HAP dollars. Yet, if repairs are not made and the owner agent is out of compliance before the first of the following month, being August 1st, there will not be any HAP payments made until the owner has corrected the items. And the owner has 60 days from the effective date, which is August the 1st. For example, he has 60 days, which in this case would be September 30th. And this is to correct the items, or the owner is in jeopardy of losing all HAP funds, and the contract will be canceled. Abated HAP funds are not recoverable and will not be returned to the owner agent. The participant cannot be held responsible for those HAP dollars. Within the 60 days, if the owner corrects the item, the owner agent must call Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority HQS Department to initiate the scheduling of the abatement reinspection. Upon past abatement reinspection, HAP funds will start to resume again. During the abatement period, the tenant must continue to pay their portion of the rent. Within the abatement 60 days, the door is open for the tenant to receive a voucher to move. If the repairs are completed, the family can still stay with mutual agreement between the owner and the tenant. If repairs are not completed, the family will either move with continued assistance or stay in the unit, and they are responsible for 100% of the full rent. Regarding the COVID-19, I'd like to talk a little bit about the processes. In an effort to establish and maintain a safe and healthy work environment for all employees and protect the families we serve, during this COVID-19 pandemic, we ask our clients to contact their caseworkers by phone, email, fax, or mail any documents. We will see clients by appointment only. If you're not sure who the tenant's caseworker is, call our call center at 702 Four seven seven three one zero zero, and they can direct you to the caseworker. Many of the forms that both tenants and owners, agents may need are available online. The for rent lease form, a request for tenancy approval, RIFTA, the W-9 form, the ACH or the automatic direct deposit form, SNARA's statement of ownership form, a sample copy of avoided check, and a sample copy of a recorded deed. In order to navigate through our website, first go to www.snvrha.org and in the menu, click on Find Housing. On the left-hand side, you'll see a listing of various hyperlinks, including HCV forms. Click on that. What appears is a listing of many PDF documents, fillable as well of all the forms necessary for our tenants, landlords, and owner agents. We'd like to thank you for watching our presentation today. Remember, you can find our forms on our website and our landlord portal. So remember, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at us at any point in time. Thank you. That concludes the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority's Landlord Briefing. We hope you learned something today from this presentation.